Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. Helicopters are out today, so I hope you can hear me. But I am really excited. It's a little late in the season to be planting, but we still have decent weather and not too many frosts. We don't really get freezes here um, in our zone. So when I found these fox tail ferns at the store, I just couldn't pass them up. Um, had to get a couple. I've been looking for some. I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have several up on my porch and they do beautifully in the shade and containers for me. And so this part of my garden is just kind of a problem area for me. It doesn't get enough sun for my sunny annuals. I've tried shadier annuals like begonias, like let's see, one, I planted like 30 around this tree last year and this year, and they just don't do well. Um, I have some larger things like peonies and lupins down here that do beautifully um, in the spring. And then the, the peonies are still babies. So they, they grew and they were green and beautiful last year, but they're not at the flowering stage yet. Um, so that leaves this entire area just kind of empty. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to put a lot of flowering things down here. So I decided I wanted to add some of these beautiful foxtail ferns for some texture. They stay green all year round for us down here. They can grow really big, two to three feet tall by up to five feet wide if they really like their spot. So depending on how many years you give them, they just get bigger and bigger. Um, in a spot like this, we'll probably divide them and keep placing them around the area. But I figured I'd get some more. I know they do well on my porch and they like the shade, which this spot is shadier. So we are going to plant them down around this tree. You can see I got three of them. These are two gallon pots. They were $13. I almost got some a couple, like a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago but they were one gallon pots for $20. So when I saw these twice as big for almost half the money, I was like, I just have to go for it. If they don't survive, they don't survive, but it's worth a try. Now I wanted six of them. I just couldn't justify that. And since they're twice as big, they are good, healthy sized plants and they grow by these little potato like pods. I believe they're rhizomes. Let me know in the comments if you know. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to divide them in half and plant six of them. So I'm gonna plant one, two, three here. You can see by the pink tag, I have a peony tuber here. I have a peony tuber on that side. Those kind of grew this year just a little bit, but this was their first year. I also have a peony plant right here that grew like it was a whole plant and another one back there. So eventually, we'll probably let these ferns kind of fill in all around where the peony tubers aren't. And we'll let the peonies, as they grow up, we'll divide the ferns away from them. But it takes many years for a peony plant to really grow into its own and to produce bloom. So it's going to be a while. I'm going to start by dividing these. I'll show you how I do it. I'm sure there's better ways. <laughs> and then we will plant them. It's warm for a couple days here and then it's supposed to get a lot of rain towards the end of the week. So I wanna get these in the ground so they can kind of establish before it gets too cold again. We're not supposed to get anything down and even the 35 range until next week, week after. So hopefully by then they'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and bring y'all closer so you can see dividing these and we're just gonna get them planted. We're not doing anything fancy today. I'm so excited. All right, so here's our plant. You can see with the foxtails here, anything like this, these are dead. So we want to prune these out of here and you just follow it down, clip, the dead pieces out. Now I'll show you if I find one. I know there was a couple in here. Um, the dead ones will be brown like this. Here's one. 
this little guy here that's green and just like a little stick, he will grow out further. That is new growth. So they will grow up kind of big and strong like that in just one long, here's one, one long stick. And then you'll see here like these sparser ones, they will start to put out their little ferns. And then eventually it will be a whole long, floofy floof. Floof is the technical word. So now that we've got that kind of clean up, let's go ahead and get this baby out of its pot so we can divide it. All right. I really don't have to cut this pot off, but we might have to. You can see the roots are pretty extensive in here. rhizomes. So like you see, they're just little potato guys. And I had one on my porch that got too much sun and it died all the way back. I cut it literally even with the soil and it is now like, I'll show you, but <laughs> now whole plant. So we're just going to take a knife. It's easier if you have a better dividing tool, like they make serrated edged blades and things, but honestly, I don't have one. So I just use an old kitchen knife. I'm going to start to separate these ferns in two. So I have like a division, church and state, if you will. All right, I think that's pretty good. And I'm literally just going to cut straight down through there. And we will see how it goes. Wish me luck. Don't lose too much of the ferns, but they'll grow back if we do. Try to guide that knife under as many of the top ferns as possible so that I'm not cutting through branches, I'm cutting through roots. the densest and it's going to be the hardest to cut. I think other than that it won't be that bad. Once you make a channel, just keep working in that channel. Don't make new ones. That one. Cut it on this 
So now we've got two plants. You can see where we cut through here. And then the rest of the plant still has its roots and rhizomes. So really this should do just fine. Oh, lost a couple. I knew we would. All right, so let's go ahead. One here. This little baby. To the other side. All right, give me a minute. We'll do the other two. All right, so I just decided to go ahead and plant them because y'all know the drill, dig a hole, put in plant, fill in hole. So I think they look great. I ended up doing three around the tree and then continuing back here. This is a hydrangea here and you can see it has buds on it. So next year it will rebloom for us. And then I've got some lupin in here and the pink tags here. There's one here, but it's covered by dirt are my two peonies on this side. So when the peonies and the lupins and the hydrangea are up and beautiful, they will be up and beautiful. But like now in the fall or winter, when none of those things are going, the ferns can give us a really pretty texture and height that we really need in this space. So I am going to put some more leaves around these just to kind of mulch them up for winter. And it, you can see I did go ahead and make sure to plant them wherever I could as close to that soaker hose as possible. I'm replacing all my soaker hoses with drip next year, but these are ferns. Ferns like water, all the water, all the time. Once I put drip in, I will probably run an individual emitter to each of these just to make sure they always stay moist because this is the end of my drip system and I want them to make sure they get a lot of water. But in the dormant season, like right now, they don't need that as much. So they're good to go until spring. Um, I did want to point out that I don't know if you noticed, but two of them, the one I showed you and the last one, I got my knife really tight down to the base. I placed it where in between all the fronds and then I cut down. And so I didn't lose hardly any fronds. I might have to cut this one off. It's a little wonky, um, but I didn't lose hardly any fronds on those two. The second one I thought, well, maybe it'd be better to start at the back, separate the roots and then cut straight through. And that is the one where I lose, I lose, I lost quite a few fronds on top. Now it has still has lots of roots. It'll regrow, but I think the place your knife cut straight through method um, gave me much prettier plants and it still preserved the roots just fine. So that is what I would do. I am a hot mess, so I'm going inside to take a shower and clean up, but I'm very excited. I have been wanting foxtail ferns back here for a while. I love the ones on my porch. I planted two there my first season in this house almost two, almost three years ago. And one of them, like I said, got hit by the sun. The other one is thriving. It is huge. It is to the point where I planted some pansies in front of it for fall and winter. And um, there's hardly any room for pansies because the fern has grown so big. So I might, not now, because we're too close to worry about it. I've already put pansies in the pot. But next spring, when I go to take those pansies out and put summer things in the pot, I think I'm going to divide that plant into three, leave one in the pot, and put another two ferns down here. So they definitely can divide. They, they're doing great. So... I will give you an update, of course, in our monthly videos, our monthly garden tours, and the next spring, how they come through the winter, planting this late in the season. It is November 28th today. See you in the next video. Bye.